Good evening. I'm Henry Goodwin, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Earlier today, Matt Rule met with the media ahead of Senior Day this weekend with the game against Iowa. He was asked about what Senior Day means to him. Here's what the coach had to say. I just want to express my, my deep, deep, deep gratitude for the 24, probably about 24 guys that we're gonna, they're going to walk out on Friday and um, as seniors. Uh, so a couple guys are still because of COVID, you know, so, some guys are still making some decisions up, but um, you can't do this uh, this job without buying from players. And these players, um, while I think they've bought into us, more importantly, I think they care deeply about Nebraska and Nebraska football. You'll hear more from that coming up later this hour. In volleyball news, today, Lexi Rodriguez was named Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. Rodriguez led the Huskers to a Big Ten title over the weekend with 5.6 seven digs per set in sweeps of Michigan and Iowa. The Husker soccer team is headed to the Elite Eight after a dominant 4-0 win over UC Irvine. Next up for the Huskers is a trip to Stanford to take on the Cardinal this Friday at four. Three Big Ten men's basketball games are going on tonight. Indiana beat Louisville 74-66. Number two, Purdue beat number 11, Gonzaga 73-63 in Hawaii and Wisconsin is leading number 24, Virginia, 33 to 22. There are five Big Ten women's basketball games today. Florida beat Purdue, 52-49. Number 24, Ole Miss beat Michigan, 60 to 49. Number 15, Ohio State beat East Carolina, 79-55. Penn State is leading Oklahoma State, 25-18, and Fairfield at Rutgers is underway. Big time Monday night football matchup, the reigning champion Chiefs head to Philly to take on the Eagles in a rematch of the Super Bowl. That game kicks off at 7.15. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now get ready for two hours of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly, all the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Chubba gets the shotgun snap, looking to throw. Bean blitz, rolls away from the pressure. Looking upfield, he's going to take off and run. He's got a first down to midfield. 45, Chubba to the 40, 35, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Nebraska. Three, Ken Murray sends the line drive serve to Harper, her younger sister. Perfect pass. Harper gets it back. A boom. Wow. Gravity is a mere annoyance to Harper Murray, 17-14 Huskers. Takes a handoff, back to throw, step, throws downfield, taking a deep shot down the field, and the ball's intercepted, picked off by Tommy Hill. There's an INT, he's at the 15, to the 20, breaks a tackle, skirts to the outside, 25, makes an man miss, slides his way to the 28-yard line. Served by Laney, bad pass, and that's an ice! They did it! Conference champions all by themselves and the players dogpile. Oh, look at that emotion released. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cooty on the Huskers Radio Network. Always cool to hear a championship kind of point, and that was it yesterday for the Huskers to win it outright, although they on Friday night got at least a share of the championship after Wisconsin got upset by Purdue. What a weekend. A lot of things happened. A lot has happened since we were with you for a short time on Friday night. Welcome to another week of Sports Island here on the Huskers Radio Network. We're not quite sure how to act. We haven't had a full two-hour show on a Monday in like a month. I know. Well, Cole was like, I hope I'm not forgetting anything. And that's, I'm like, yeah, I kind of <laughs> yeah. didn't know what time I needed to be here today. It's like, what the heck is going on? We just haven't been here for very many chances. And then when we have, they've been short or leading into something so it's yeah it's been crazy quite a weekend congratulations to husker volleyball uh, the win over michigan friday night they beat iowa yesterday in straights they've got two big matches this week on the road at wisconsin minnesota and then selection sunday where they will find out their path in the ncaa tournament which will not make them leave lincoln they're going to get to play the first four rounds in lincoln because of where that what they've done through the regular season congratulations to john walker's husker squad beat Tennessee Friday night uh, in front of a great crowd and then played through the drizzle yesterday and really took it to UC Irvine. They are now to the final eight. 
They're to the fourth round. They'll go to Stanford for a match, as Henry told you, Friday afternoon at 4 o'clock. Wonderful weekend for them. Also, while we're handing out platits, let's uh, say great job by Mark Manning's wrestling squad. They went to the Navy Classic over the weekend and rolled their way through that thing, easily winning the team title. Had a lot of individual winners back there as well. They're off to an amazing start. Let's talk about a tough football night in Madison. That's where Jessica and I were for the weekend. What a great start for the Big Red. They get up 14-0, trail, then have a nice drive at the end of the game to tie it and then lose in overtime. And there was a lot of pain around the locker room, and you talked to some of the guys after the game, and I think the team knew they played pretty darn well, good enough in a lot of ways to win, and yet come up shy on Saturday night. Yeah, and there just were, the, the way they came out and the start, you just felt like things were going to go right, and they've lost some close games here this season, but... That was the most devastated. I feel like I've seen the guys, especially the ones that I talked to, just because, you know, it felt good all week. We had talked about that all week, that it, it felt good. They, the way that they respond, they've just had such good um, approach to each week, no matter what the outcome is. And it just seemed like it was a, a little extra hurt this week. And I just think they felt it just slip through the grasp of their fingertips. But I think more than anything, especially for the defensive players, is that, you know, they, they take a lot of pride in the way that they play, and I do not think that they, and I know that they do not think that they played, I know that they know that they did not play up to their standard that they have set for themselves, and um, I, I think they probably put a lot on their shoulders on this one. And, and it's Wisconsin. They just have not been able to get over the Wisconsin hump last year, losing by one point here on a frigidly cold day uh, a year ago, and then two years ago, Adrian was the quarterback, threw a pass into the end zone late in the game. We all thought it was P.I. on Samori Toure. Don't get the call. They really thought they could get that Wisconsin monkey off their back, get bowl eligible. That one to me, and yeah, it's one thing to lose to Maryland, who you don't play every year, haven't played every year, have no really history with. But, you know, three-point loss at Michigan State, three-point loss at home to Maryland, and then an overtime loss at Madison – it's a frustrated team because they're not they're right there in all these games week after week after week and yet still one win shy of getting to a bowl game. When you heard Jeremiah say last week and just there's a lot of Husker players that they have been handed been on the wrong side of that Wisconsin battle for years and how much they, you know, despise the Badgers. I mean, you talk about Iowa being one of the rivals. There's no doubt Wisconsin is, especially for these players that have not been able to to get that win there. And so, um, you know, it just, yeah, it, it it just means a little bit more when you play a team every year and when you just can't seem to to get on the right side of one against them and, and to be in battles like that. And he just felt like it was it was going to happen. I mean, the way that things were going to start that game, it just thought, what could go wrong? And then it just it changed in a hurry where the defense didn't do what they were supposed to do, and the offense kind of lost their momentum a little bit. How impressed, though, were you with, with Chubba? Yeah, especially to start the, the game and just he was poised. It didn't look like he was the third-string quarterback, you know. I mean, how he handled himself on the sideline. I did a report on this, but everybody's smiling and laughing the way that he took off and ran. I mean, having a good time with it, and he, ch they're chanting Chubba. There's a lot of Nebraska fans. They're chanting Chubba, and he kind of cracked a little bit of a smile, but boy, he was focused. He, focused. he was locked in. He was on to the next. He was talking to Garrett McGuire, to Adam DeMichael about, okay, what, what about the next series? What are we going to do? So just the way that he handled the moment, too, it just it didn't seem too big for him at all. I really felt like, and I think I said this in the broadcast, I think it was the best game we had because we won games with him. But Shubba took care of the football. Yeah. I know we had the pick on the last play of the game, but he's trying to just make something happen at that point. They, they were pressuring. It was fourth and 16. Throw it down the field. See if you get a P.I. See if you get a Ball and Nick tipped around, and you may be picking. So, so I don't really almost count that, but he just managed the game so well, ran for a good percentage, threw for a high percentage of completion rate. I just thought he did a terrific job for a guy that hadn't played much all year. And, and it was, like you said, the balance between making the big throws and looking comfortable and the throws being on the money uh, most of the time, and but then also reading when it was open to run. And I don't even know if he's fully healthy, you know? Probably I mean, not, no. I mean, he's probably not 100%, but the way that he was able to take off and make, things, make some things happen with his feet when they weren't there in the air, but just I thought... 
you know, at times maybe the other quarterbacks might have lo looked a little shaky throwing the football. I thought Chubba sat back there and looked real confident throwing the football. But then, you know, the, the one area that you thought that the other two had an advantage with their feet, Chubba looked just as good doing that. I shouldn't say just as good, but, but actually had some success doing that as well. So, you know, it just, um, yeah, I, I think there's no doubt about it. And the way that the offense was rolling there, and then even the, the they didn't score, but they got real close, what, the fourth and one. And then, so they, they were just able to really move the ball really well, which at times they just, this offense has not been able to do real consistently. I, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I, I want to talk about that. A lot, a lot of people feel like the game kind of flipped in that second quarter, Nebraska's up 14 nothing. They're at the Wisconsin 32, 32-33 yard line. Go for it. Don't make it. Badgers get it, and then they go down the field and score to make it 14 to seven. How big a play did you feel like it was at the time? And do you think differently now that we know how the game ended up going? To me, I, at the time, I didn't think it was a huge, huge momentum play, but maybe, maybe in the end, it was. I, I didn't at the time because I thought the way that the defense plays and are locked in, no matter it, we've we've seen it time and time again. I mean, they'll throw an interception and the team will be on their on the 20 yard line and the defense will hold them to a field goal. You know, I mean, it just the way that you've seen this defense locked down, no matter what situation they've been in. I didn't think it was that big of a momentum swing at the time at, at all. And I still don't know if it was. I think there were other maybe bigger momentum swings, but I don't think the missed field goal was the 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 biggest by any means yeah i don't think and, and i'm talking about the fourth down the fourth play down, at the end of early in the second quarter maybe maybe yeah but i just yeah at the time so in the second happen. quarter and and again even no matter what whether it's the missed field goal or the missed fourth down conversion you still felt like you still had a lot of confidence and belief yeah. in your defense and there's still a lot of game to be played the offense was rolling you felt like hey let's give them a chance and then think if they would get it how much momentum that would have been boy that would have been really hard for wisconsin to overcome if you do get that fourth right. down if you score at all there even a three yeah you're up 17 nothing i so you know i know a lot of the media people were talking about it after the game coach got asked about it you know and i, I think it was the right call i don't think we were quite in field goal range the ball wasn't carrying. It was cold, so the ball doesn't travel as far. We, none of the kickoffs really went out of the back of the end zone the other night. And so uh, big, uh, there were a lot of big plays in the game. A couple of techs have come in for us. Any update on Anthony Grant, who got hurt late? Actually, nobody asked Coach I today believe that. at his pressure about any of the injuries that happened. Yeah. So, no, we don't have one. And sometimes he'll say it in his opening statement, but it didn't get brought up in his press conference. But it, it looked... I'll just tell you from my perspective, it didn't look good with Anthony, and he didn't put much weight at all on the the leg when he was walking off. So I, I'm not sure. And no matter how how bad it was, how how he'll progress throughout the week if he can go, it's still probably not going to be 100. percent And so I think this is going to be a game that maybe we'll see Quentin Knives take some handoffs because he still hasn't. I know he's back there for returns this game, but we still haven't seen him, uh, you know, and, and I, to me, I think probably it's less about what you do when you get a handoff or when the ball's in your hands. It's more about what you do when the ball's not in your hands for a freshman running back. And so knowing when to pick up the blitzes and the pass protection part of it, to me, probably is the biggest maybe issue why he hadn't seen the field. But it, hey, if, if Anthony Grant's down, you're going to have to have him. Yeah, he, it, it didn't look good leaving the field, but we did not get an update today from the coach. I, I'm shocked that it did not get asked at his press gathering. By the way, if you want to be a part of the program, our lines, both phone and text, are open, 402-413-2400. Tim and Carney says it seemed like we went away from the quarterback keepers in the running game completely, especially in the overtime. I just pulled up our first play on offense in overtime. We tossed it to Anthony Grant. This is the play that he got nicked up on. We lost a yard on that. And I thought we ran the ball. Chubba had some big runs on that drive to go tie the game in the last play. So I, I don't know that I would agree with that, Tim. I think we did kind of run the football quite a bit. Chubba had that conversion on third and two where he rushed it for six yards to take it down to the 12. Um, we were, Emmett ran a couple times on that last drive. So I think we ran the ball a lot on that drive that tied the game up. So... I don't know that, Tim, I can go along with that we got away from the quarterback run game. I think what Chubb ended up with in the game, he had like 18 rushing He's attempts. He's over 100, wasn't it? He ended up having 14 rushing attempts for 105. Yeah. I mean, 
I just, I, I'm just, I, Jessica, I'm amazed at how well he played for not having started a game in 12 months. Pretty remarkable. Yeah, I just, to me, I just, he, he's a guy, you go back to why he was here in, uh, why he came here was with Mark Whipple, who recruited him in high school. Mark Whipple's got a really heavy passing offense. So Mark Whipple doesn't want a quarterback like Chubba Purdy if he can't throw the football. And I think we saw that on display, that he does have a, a good arm. And But then also he can do some things in, in the quarterback run game. He also can, hey, if he sees an opening, knows when to pull it and run. I, I think I, I talked about this a little bit last week, but he's been the guy that's been on the headset this entire season. So whether Garrett McGuire, Mark Satterfield in the booth, out of the booth, Chubb has been the one wearing the headset. And so he knows everything that's going on. So I think even though he hasn't had the physical reps, I think he's done a lot of mental reps. And I think he's kept himself ready that way. I think he's studies the playbook. He is mentally probably is there this year in the way that he's approached the season and preparing when you don't have all, all, always the physical reps. I think he's he's been able to have some really good mental preparation that also allowed him to be ready for the moment too but he just he's an older guy a mm -hmm. lot of times that that flip switches the switch flips i love that term <laughs> you've coined that term um but a lot of times <laughs> that happens you know when yep. you become older and then i just i think he things have maybe slowed down for him a little bit you have to remember he's really hadn't even played a full season of college football he so not. and he hasn't had those opportunities so i just i think he was ready i think he's matured i think he just was you know, it never once did he look nervous to me through warm-ups, through at any point in the game, even during the overtime leading up to it, the when it, they were trying to go tie it, never once did he seem like big-eyed and, you know, what is that, doe-eyed or whatever, big, where you just, the moment was getting too wide -eyed, big. Wide-eyed. Yeah, wide-eyed. Wide I mean, he didn't ever seem that way. He seemed in control and in command and was leading the way the entire time. I was really impressed, not just with what he did on the field, but what he did off the field. I think your term, the game has slowed down for him, is very accurate. It looks like he's like, oh, okay, I yeah. know what speed I need to play at, and sometimes I need to maybe breathe a little bit more. But I was really impressed with what Chubba did. Uh, the other night. All right, here's what we have on the program for tonight. We're going to work in some clips from Coach Rural's press conference today, senior day coming up on, on Friday with the Iowa Hawkeyes here. Some thoughts for him about what this class has meant to him. We'll get his take also on what he thought of Chubba Purdy's performance today. Fred Hoiberg will stop by. We'll talk to the, the head basketball coach. The Cornhuskers off to a 5-0 and start after waxing, I mean waxing, <coughs> excuse me, Oregon State on Saturday. I'm all choked up. It's, <laughs> the, it's the, it's the, the nachos. nachos. You went and got some nachos from the, the concession stand the for the high school football. But, so, yeah, they waxed Oregon they State. Did. I'll finish it for you. They waxed them. <laughs> so we'll hear from Coach Hoiberg. Also, the Cooks. Kicking back with the Cooks. They have recorded a new podcast. We'll play you a little snippet of that coming up tonight as well. And we want your input. 402-413-2400. That is our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. They are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient Sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. More of the show coming up. Triple B Feed has the products to help your cows thrive. Whether it's weekly delivery of consumption-controlled Lumix liquid mineral with protein or Sweet Pro block supplements for space feeding while also stretching your forages up to 25% better, Triple B has you covered. Let Brian and Brad Blauhorn take some of the stress out of your beef production this year. For more information and other products, visit TripleBFeed.com. Triple B Feed, helping you and your cattle. <laughs> There's room at the table. Central Valley Ag works with farmers and ranchers to deliver the protein and minerals to ensure their herds are at optimal performance. Winter is coming. CVA's Power Cow Tubs help your herd stay strong and healthy through the toughest season. For a limited time, register to win two 250-pound CVA Power Cow Tubs when you visit cvacoop.com. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. Hi, I'm a volleyball. It's an okay life. I go back and forth about it. But I really wish I was a Nebraska Lottery Powerball or Mega Millions Mega Ball. See, all they have to do is mix around in a big plastic bubble and roll down a ramp, and then people win millions. What a great life. As for me, I get thrown around all day and have to worry about getting spiked, which is about to happen right now. Oh, ow! Couldn't you just do a nice, gentle tip? The Nebraska Lottery. Top prize odds vary by game. 
Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions. Cow chip throwing. Or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Hey Husker fans, it's Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. As we get ready to celebrate 1890's one-year anniversary, I'm proud to say the 1890 Initiative now represents 150 Husker student-athletes in nine sports. And with your help, we can keep 1890 going strong, helping student-athletes get the most from their name, image, and likeness, and preparing them for life after college. Visit 1890Nebraska.com to learn more about NIL and 1890 and contribute today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Woodhouse Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is bringing you more power, capability, and savings with the full lineup of new Ram trucks during the Black Friday sales event going on all month long. Lease a 2024 Ram 1500 Crew Cab Bighorn for $429 per month. Visit our two convenient metro locations in Blair or Bellevue or online anytime. Lease for 42 months, 10,000 miles per year. With approved credit, tax title license extra. $2,500 down plus first payment and $299 doc fee to its signing. Example stock number BC230242. Offer expires 11-30-2023. See dealer for details. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skecher shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Deer roads, trails, and rivers. You ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Tamen 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Hey Husker fans, it's Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. As we get ready to celebrate 1890's one-year anniversary, I'm proud to say the 1890 Initiative now represents 150 Husker student-athletes in nine sports. And with your help, we can keep 1890 going strong, helping student-athletes get the most from their name, image, and likeness, and preparing them for life after college. Visit 1890Nebraska.com to learn more about NIL and 1890 and contribute today. We're back inside our Acres Broadcast Center. Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, Acres Solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you on a Monday post-Wisconsin show for you here tonight. 402-413-2400, the number to be a part of the program. Let's head to the phones. Let's go to Plattsmouth 
and Drew. Good evening, Drew. Welcome to the show. <clears throat> okay, guys. I, I just thought a, a key part of the game that we lost was the special teams. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with Brian Buschini, but he's just been struggling lately. I don't know if he's injured and we just don't know about it, but in the Big Ten West, there's so many good punters, and week by week now, we're just getting killed in the field position battle. He's had these punts that go 10 to 20 yards, which is just like a turnover in the missed field goal. And then I also thought Kobe Brent had a great opportunity to block a punt for whatever reason, just decided not to lay out. I don't know if he was concerned about running into the punter or whatnot, but in these very close games, one possession games, the the punting game, I think, is, has been a huge factor in some of these losses that we've had. So hopefully we can get that short up because Iowa has a really good punter. So yeah. thanks. Drew, appreciate it. Yeah, he's elite. He might be the Ray Guy winner, the top punter in the country this year. Very fair points. Brian had a really off night. The 19-yarder set him up with a short field. They got a field goal out of that. He had a chance later to pin them deep. Didn't get a really good punt. Hit a low liner that they brought back to the Nebraska 40. The defense did stop that drive. So, yeah, Nebraska was on the short end of the stick in field position all night long. And then, you know, Tristan missed the field goal. That's a fair point. The special teams have to be better. Yeah, and I, I saw a conversation with Ed Foley that he was having with Brian Buschini and just, you know, I didn't hear, but I, I took it as, hey, it was after one of the, the not-so-great punts that, hey, we, we've got to get this fixed. And there was, it, there was a stretch in the season, boy, he was just it was great, solid, lights out, and that's such a weapon. I mean, as he just mentioned, I mean, it can, it can really make or break a football game depending on when there's not a lot of opportunities to score and, and it's low scoring. I mean, it can really make or break where, you, where either your offense is set up or where you pin the opposing team's offense for this Nebraska defense that's been so good. But it just, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I think Brian will be the first to tell you he's got to be better. And I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know what the issues are, but uh, hopefully he gets him figured out for this one, absolutely. And, and I just think with Tristan, it's kind of a little bit of a freshman, probably up and down type of thing. We've seen him hit some big wins, but then, yeah, we've seen him miss some, some really crucial ones. And so I just think for him, he and but I love his demeanor on the sideline, boy. He there are a lot of kickers that get a little emotional and get caught up in whether it's they make it or miss it. And for him, he stays pretty even killed. Other than the one, the 55 yard or whatever that he, he hit, great, which he should. Yes, yeah. yeah, the that one, that that real long one he hit. He got a little fired up for that one, but he stays pretty even killed. And and so you like his demeanor, and I don't think he's going to lose any confidence. But yeah, I mean, it it certainly is where. You talk about, a, a, again, another area where if you have a field goal clicker that it's automatic, it certainly makes a huge difference, right? And especially, in, and even in, in decision-making, yeah. right? Like, and I think even Coach Rule mentioned that, like throw your freshman kicker out there in a certain situation. It just is, um, I think it probably affects decision-making too. On our text line, Doug in Norfolk, does Purdy have a redshirt season available? He's only played in three games this year. He has redshirt. He redshirted at Florida State before he transferred here. So he's a sophomore, redshirt sophomore. He has two years of eligibility left after Does this. he have a COVID year? Maybe. He is older, so he could have a COVID year. So that would be the only thing yeah. is that maybe he has three years because of a COVID year. Could be, yeah. Let's uh, stay in Lincoln and talk to Becky. Good evening, Becky. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. I want to talk about bulletin boards and planting seeds in your players' heads. They put up bulletin board articles about how we hadn't beat Wisconsin since 1872. And you're a bunch of losers, and you're going to find a way to give away the game. I read an interesting article by a guy that was a Marine that talked about the Marine Corps birthday, and he said every Marine goes through this training, and they've learned all these battles and how they've won and what they've done. So let's stop putting up bulletin board stuff to tell the players they're going to give it away. And show them the 1978 Nebraska-Oklahoma game how an inferior team won because they wanted it. Becky, appreciate the phone call. So, yeah, Coach Rural got asked Thursday about it. Did he put some stuff up around the locker room? He says, no, I didn't. He said, I think some of the players did to try to motivate. And that's why it meant so much to the players. How much of a factor that had, I don't know. And I also would argue, Becky, I, I would not call Nebraska an inferior team to Wisconsin. I think those were two really evenly matched teams. That would not have been a huge upset. What was the spread? Five, I think, the other night. So it wasn't a big spread, but 
Uh, you know, I think the team wanted that game a lot, and that's why it hurt so much at the end of the game. But I thought they came out of the gates flying with their hair on fire. That's what you want to be. Yeah, they did. And there's a lot of players on that team that hadn't beaten Wisconsin that it did mean a lot to them. And then they played with a lot of guys that hadn't beaten Wisconsin. And it is. It's a rivalry game. So it just it, it was uh, they were fired up about it. By the way, I did look it up. Chubba was at Florida State in 2020, so he will get a COVID year. Okay. All right. In addition to the... So, yeah. We're still a decade away from having COVID years go away. <laughs> I think we're just My a couple God. of years. I think it's just a couple of years, but we're, yes. It so, feels like it's been forever that we've been talking about that. So irritating. Uh, let's go to Gretna and Jim. Good evening, Jim. Welcome to the program. Well, I was looking at the stats, and we only lost one stat, and that was the third downs. But here's what I don't understand. If somebody's asked the coach about it, why on that – fourth and one, why didn't we kick the field goal and try and score points versus going forward and trying to get the first down? You can't give up points in a close game. And I think if he would have kicked that field goal and made it, or even if he would have messed it, it would have set him up for the next field goal of making it. Well, we messed that one, so we should have had three field goals in that game. And we wouldn't even went to overtime. Well, but Jim, it, I guess it's up to the coach on that. He did get asked. It would have been a 50-yarder, which, again, the ball wasn't traveling that well that night. So, I mean, I, I, I think he felt like he had a better chance to make fourth and one than make a 50-yarder. Because the one he, Tristan hit that was over 50, he had the wind at his back. Right. The one that he hit here. Here. Yeah. Yes. So I just, I think that's what he was talking about. Do you put your freshman kicker in that kind of situation and... You know, especially the way the offense, it, it was moving at that time. They were having some success. So, I, I, to me, I think that's why you make that decision there. Jim, appreciate it. Th thanks for the phone call. But, yeah, 50 yarders, that's not a gimme. And so, I think the same result would have happened. You still would have fired Wisconsin up because they stopped you. Uh, so, I, I have no problem with that. I don't think that was a, that big of a risk. And I think that was probably the right call to make there. Yeah, I just, at the time, the way that they had came out, the offense was rolling, I just... You, I mean, you and Damon said it like, "Hey, I'm not, I'm not upset, I'm not upset yeah. about that call. You guys are liking that call, and I, I think that the team wanted to go for it. There, they were feeling it, they were confident at that moment, and so I think you can tell on the sidelines too whether teams, say, hey, they want to go for it, and and the offense wanted to go for it, and so a lot of times too, you got to trust your players, and if they're feeling confident in that situation, you you go for it. The, uh, you know, uh, one thing was we kept talking last week all about turnovers. There was one turnover in the game. It was that last play of the game that Chubba threw. So they took care of the ball. Yeah. And that was one of the keys. You can't come on the road, turn the ball over. So they did take care of that part of it. They, they did didn't take more, it away. They, had more, they didn't take it away, and they had more penalties. There were yeah. some false starts. It was loud. It was a really noisy stadium. We knew it would be, and I think that bothered us a little bit. And the thing is, is that it wasn't loud at the beginning. There was way more Nebraska chairs in that stadium to start. I mean, it was it was silent. I mean, they had, first of all, they're a late arriving crowd. I know they're they notoriously were. known for that. But they were not into that game until really, on. I think until it was tied, until it was 14-14 is when they really got going, is is when they the, it got loud. You, that's where you want to go into a crowd and silence them and not let them get back into it. And I think that's they, – they definitely got some momentum there and then they got loud. Matt and Raymond said it was good to see that we took care of the turnover problem. They are just so many facets to the game that need work. Execution at times seems to be our Achilles heel. The one question I have is what happened to the momentum after those two fabulous drives? It seems like the play calling changed and the posture and body language seem to change along with it. I think we have a real shot at beating Iowa, but we're going to have to minimize our mistakes. Wisconsin made some adjustments. Wisconsin was using more three-man front those first couple of drives. Nebraska was gouging them. They went to a four-man front, so they adjusted. And I think Nebraska then had a hard time getting things going because they saw what Nebraska's game plan was. They adjusted, and Nebraska just had a hard time kind of countering what they flipped off to. I can't wait to hear what Jeremiah has to say about the adjustments that were made in the game when you talked to him this week for the sideline slice and I didn't think the body language got bad until I, uh, I mean maybe they were a little frustrated at the end of the maybe in the third or fourth quarter at one point but I didn't think the body language was bad at all if problem gambling is burning up your money there's a way out help is free and confidential for Nebraskans and their families there's no judgment just help visit lifeafterbet.com we'll come back play some of the clips 
from Coach Worrell's press conference from earlier today. That's coming up next. Everybody wants a classic Christmas. Well, there's nothing more classic than cash. So until January 3rd, 2024, enter non-winning Nebraska Lottery Holiday Classic Scratch tickets online, and you could win $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, or $20,000. Hurry and jingle all the way to your nearest Nebraska Lottery retailer and have yourself a classic little Christmas with the whole family of Holiday Classic Scratch tickets. Top prize odds vary by game. Drive with purpose and arrive in style when you purchase your next vehicle at Woodhouse Chevy. With advanced capabilities and safety features, the Chevy lineup puts you in a position to upgrade your ride and keep moving with confidence. Choose from a variety of models equipped with a spacious, detail-focused interior and distinctively modern exterior. Purchasing your next vehicle at Woodhouse Chevy is an easy choice. Shop our current offers and inventory today and find new roads in-store or online with Woodhouse Chevy. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. This statement has not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. When it comes to my lifestyle and diet, I don't always make the smartest choices. Touchdown! Woo! Hey, how about another round and some more chips? But when it comes to taking care of my liver, I do make one very smart choice. Active liver tablets from New Nordic. I used to have real issues with my liver. And at my last checkup, my doc was concerned about my numbers. But since adding a once-a-day active liver tablet, my gut's better, I feel great, and my doctor's happy. I ask a lot of my liver, so the least I can do to say thanks is a daily dose of active liver. Active liver is one of many award-winning health products from New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Scandinavia. Purchase at Amazon.com or for a volume discount, visit NewNordicUSA.com. Available as a tablet or delicious sugar-free gummy. Protect and help your liver the easy and effective way with active liver at Amazon or NewNordicUSA.com. It's time to light up the season during the Make the Holidays Bright sales event. Get our best offers and choose from a huge selection of Ford F-150 trucks with the capability, convenience, and technology to help bring us together. Wow. Discover how Ford F-150 can make the holidays bright. Now, get a new 2023 Ford F-150 with 2.9% financing for 72 months. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the trail taming 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. What's colder than the coldest? A polar bear. I have reports of a polar bear on the loose. Man, is it cold enough for a polar bear in here? Yes, we use SOS. Come on in. SOS to the rescue! Nebraska defense lineman Nash Hubbard here. People know me as the polar bear, and when I want to stay cool, I call SOS. The texts don't make commissions, so they give you an honest opinion, fair pricing, and longer warranties than the competition. Guaranteed. Mention the polar bear and get a free 10-year labor warranty on new York equipment. The best warranty you have. 
There's room at the table. Central Valley Ag works with farmers and ranchers to deliver the protein and minerals to ensure their herds are at optimal performance. Winter is coming. CVA's Power Cow tubs help your herd stay strong and healthy through the toughest season. For a limited time, register to win two 250-pound CVA Power Cow tubs when you visit cvacoop.com. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. We're back inside the Acres Broadcast Center. Acres is, you know it, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer. Acres Solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you Monday night. Coach Rural had a press conference today to launch the week, the final week of the regular season. Time now for us to give you a practice report. <laughs> The 1890 Initiative presents the Nebraska Football Practice Report. We're talking about practice. Do you want to support Husker student-athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Well, the coach today, things he got asked about was about his quarterback, Chubba Purdy, thought he played really well, and talked about the health issues that Coach Rural has alluded to that maybe has kept Chubba from really competing for this job up until this point in time in the season, and here was the coach's comments about Chubba. I think when you see someone have success, it usually, um, it usually stems from their ability to overcome some sort of adversity. So, you know, um, I, think he's learned, I think he's learned and grown a lot over the course of this year. Um, I'll let them speak. I'll let Chubba and Heinrich and them speak about, you know, the things they've – endured in their time to college. I won't speak for them, but I think, um, you know, I think coming in this year, um, you know, they, you know, I challenged Chubba a lot in the spring. I challenged him in the fall. As I've said, if you go back to my statements, I, I thought he was having a great camp and he got banged, he got hurt. He's gotten healthier and healthier and healthier. Um, you certainly see the speed that he has and uh, he's got moxie and toughness. So um, I told him before the game, not after the game, I told him before the game. You're going to play well, and you're going to, people are going to say, "Why didn't you play earlier?" And you know, I showed these guys a lot of different videos. I showed them Kobe Bryant. I showed them, you know, over the last couple weeks, it's been Kobe Bryant, like going through adversity to become a great player. I think Chuba has endured, you know, some of the physical adversity and then not playing, and gotten just better and better and better. He's played on the scout team. He's taken the reps when we've given them to him. And so when he went out there, I thought he played free and just kind of played the play. So um, I don't know if I'm answering your question. But I, I, you know, I kind of told him that ahead of time because I, I knew he was going to play well. And uh, um, I could see that when he went out there too, last week, and I could see that in practice this past week. And he did. He did. I mean, I, and that's what I said. I just I felt like he never once did you, would you have, if you didn't know anything about Nebraska football, you just showed up and just watched the sidelines, you would have thought Chubba Purdy was a starting quarterback all along, just the way that he handled himself and the way that he managed things and then the way that he played. I mean, it just... Yeah, there was no doubt about it. And the way that he was leading and vocal and all of that, I just, I was really impressed, not just with his play, but how he handled things off the field as well. Huskers, we all know it. They're one game shy of being bowl eligible. The coach was asked today, how much is that a motivating factor for this team going into this week's final game against Iowa? I'm motivated every week. Um, you know, I, I think it would be great for our program. You know, it'd be great for our young players. It'd be great for our older guys. I know our, our older guys are, are motivated. Um, I've never, you know, I mean, I, th I think, you look at the last three weeks, you know, we get knocked down, we get right back up, you know, and they come back each week. And so 
uh, I don't think there's any question. I don't think there's any question of you know that they're motivated to try to get it done and try to get this win. And um, like I said, when we were at five and three, you know, I didn't want to just win one more. I wanted to win them all. We're sitting here at five and six. I don't. I want to win. I, I want to win each week. I truly believe it when I say go one and zero each week. But I know they want to win. They they want they want you know I mean to think that they're sitting here at senior day. They're so, a lot of these guys. It's their last game in the stadium. They're playing a ranked team. Chance to go to a bowl game. Um, if they lack any motivation, it's all there for them. But uh, I've seen this. I've seen this group do nothing but fight every week all year. You know, it's funny. And if you heard the, my, the post game interviews, I asked Thomas Fedoni. I was like, last one at home, or I, I can't remember how I phrased it in my mind. I was thinking the last regular season, last one at home. And he goes, well, we've got two more games to play. I mean, they just they they still fully believe that they and they know what's on the line, and and they're not gonna. Quit. I don't believe that at all. Just kind of what what Coach was saying. They believe they're going to fight, and even though these haven't gone the way that they wanted, they still have a really big opportunity to get into a bowl game. And hey, what better team to have that opportunity against than Iowa, right? Great way to look at it. We'll leave you with this one. Uh, the coach was asked, "What would making a bowl game do for the program?" Number one thing is the practice. Uh, we need the we, the reps, the practice. Like, I think uh, I think like Meshake Shack's about to be a really uh, Jason's about to be a really good player. I think you know Ruquan Buckley's been making the move over to the offensive line. Um, he's going to be a dynamic guard. I think I, I want to get him another month of playing O line. Um, obviously, there'd be the hey, you know, we got there for the first time in however many years to, for everybody else, and and I I, I get that. Trust me, <laughs> trust me. But um, to me, it's about the reps and the development and the opportunity to go compete again. But more importantly, it's about winning the game to get there. Like, we got to go win the game. You know, I mean, um, you know, you wake up on Saturday morning before the uh, Wisconsin game and you're watching other games and they're putting up the Big Ten West and we're in second place to start the day. But we didn't win, so you don't get to stay there. And so I want our guys to win one of these, uh, these games so that – a, they know that they've achieved it. B, we get to practice. C, we can move some guys around and try some things. Like, if you think about it, like, we went to Wisconsin, and our punt returner was a true freshman, and our kick returner was a true freshman, who's actually redshirting this year. So give me another month to practice with those guys. Um, you know, that's, to me, the, that's the benefit. It's the guys who are playing, but it's also, Steve, the, the players who are redshirting because – you know, when you're redshirting or you're not playing a ton, you know, you start to say, like, am I, you know, am I good enough? Am I going to – when you start to have a vision of, man, they, 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 they know I can play. They know what I can do. Like, can't wait for you guys to see Dylan Rogers. Can't wait for you guys to see DeAndre Barnes. You know, Jeremiah Charles played for the first time. It's still his redshirt year. I love – I mean, those guys are going to be excellent. I can't wait for you guys to see Bryce Turner. So another month with those guys would be great. But most importantly, um, to go win the game. You know, to go win a game and earn it. I think it would be it's, it's, it's what good teams do down the stretch. Can't understate how big having that extra practice sessions would be for the program and all those young guys. That's the thing we've been missing out on here for Husker football for now seven years. So a lot on the line for the Big Red when they play Iowa on Friday. Seatbelt use saves lives and prevents injuries. Nearly 15,000 lives saved per year. Buckle up. This message from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. We're back to wrap up Hour 1 next. Love is all around during the 2023 Subaru Share the Love event. By the end of this, our 16th year, Subaru and retailers like us will have donated over $285 million to charities such as the ASPCA, Make-A-Wish, Meals on Wheels America, and the National Park Foundation. Duto Subaru is proud to support Make-A-Wish Nebraska during the Subaru Share the Love event. Visit Duto Subaru, located at 2750 Jamie Lane in Lincoln, or online at dutosubaru.com for more details. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. In 1923, Bert R. Benjamin had a vision, an all-purpose tractor that could do more. With that, the Farmall was born. 
This year, Case IH is celebrating 100 years of Farmall, 100 years of milestones, 100 years of innovation, passion, grit, and they're doing it through your stories. Share them at farmall100.com. One lucky storyteller will win their own Farmall, the tractor that is the one for all. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions. Hey, you're Cow chip throwing. Or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. It's time to light up the season during the Make the Holidays Bright sales event. Get our best offers and choose from a huge selection of Ford F-150 trucks with the capability, convenience, and technology to help bring us together. Wow. Discover how Ford F-150 can make the holidays bright. Now, get a new 2023 Ford F-150 with 2.9% financing for 72 months. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Woodhouse Auto Family, your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Phone lines open for you, 402-413-2400. You can also fire off a text as well we did have a text that came in did you guys take it from the press conference today that they are figuring tony white will most likely be hired as a head coach after the season i don't know if that's the case coach rural said that he has been contacted by some headhunters who kind of go out and kind of test kick the tires on possible candidates and that coach rule gave him a ringing endorsement so what does that mean a job i don't know and who knows if Tony White wants to take that job? And that's what Coach Rule said. Make sure it's the right one, that there's the right resources. But I thought his description of Tony White, not that I would know, I'm not, not that I'm in the meeting rooms, but some of the other things was so spot on about how he's so, he's the same guy every day and just how he approaches and manages things. And I just, he, he is no doubt a head coach in waiting. It's just a matter of, is this the right time? And I think Coach White and his family, I think they really like it here. So I think it's got to be the right fit, the right move, the right time, all of that for him to make the move. But it's certainly, there's no, there, it is inevitable that it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. He, he has the luxury, I believe, of being picky. Yes, absolutely. Make sure you pick the right one for you. Yep, absolutely. So, you know, and, and also Coach Roman had a great point that – being the head coach is way different than being a coordinator mm -hmm. because there's a lot of things that I have to deal with that don't have anything to do with game planning and doing all that stuff. Right. But he has to keep the bigger vision. And we've seen a lot of coordinators who are not good head coaches. It's so you got to be right. But I don't I, like it either. I don't like it. Yeah. I think he will. I yeah. do. I do too. Yeah. He's, don't he's that lose CEO him. type that we hear about. He is definitely that. Sure does. Don't want to lose him. But again, I think the, the wise words from Coach Rural, Jessica hit on it. Make sure it's the right job. Right. Don't just take any any job. Hey, what a fast hour. We're going to keep the football chatter going next hour. Also talk some basketball with the head coach of the Cornhuskers, Fred Hoiberg. All that in hour two. Come on back. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. 
It's time to light up the season during the Make the Holidays Bright sales event. Get our best offers and choose from a huge selection of Ford F-150 trucks with the capability, convenience, and technology to help bring us together. Wow. Discover how Ford F-150 can make the holidays bright. Now, get a new 2023 Ford F-150 with 2.9% financing for 72 months. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. When you're clocking out and happy hour's already started. But... You're clocking out and happy hour's already started. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Pick up Bud Light at your local convenience store today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Go forward for your next truck or SUV and find an easier way to buy with Woodhouse Ford today. And experience the convenience of buying with Woodhouse Ford. Lease a 2023 Ford Escape Active for $397 per month for 48 months and 7,500 miles per year. First payment and $299 stock fee due at signing. Security deposit waived. Tax title license extra with approved credit. Expires 1204-2023.
Good evening. I'm Henry Goodwin, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Earlier today, Matt Rule met with the media ahead of Senior Day this weekend with the game against Iowa. He was asked about what Senior Day means to him. Here's what the coach had to say. I just want to express my, my deep, deep, deep gratitude for the 24, probably about 24 guys that we're gonna, they're going to walk out on Friday and um, as seniors. Uh, so a couple guys are still because of COVID, you know, so, some guys are still making some decisions up, but um, you can't do this, uh, this job without buying from players. And these players, um, well, I think they've bought into us. More importantly, I think they care deeply about Nebraska and Nebraska football. In Husker Volleyball news, today Lexi Rodriguez was named Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. Rodriguez led the Huskers to a Big Ten title over the weekend with 5.67 digs per set in sweeps of Michigan and Iowa. The Husker soccer team is headed to the Elite Eight after a dominant 4-0 win over UC Irvine. Next up for the Huskers is a trip to Stanford to take on the Cardinal this Friday at 4. Three Big Ten men's basketball games are going on tonight. Indiana beat Louisville 74-66. Number two, Purdue beat number 11, Gonzaga 73-63 in Hawaii. And Wisconsin beat number 24, Virginia 65-41. There are five Big Ten women's games on tonight. Florida beat Purdue 52-49. Number, two, Ole, num, number 24, Ole Miss, beat Michigan 60-49. Number 15, Ohio State, beat East Carolina 79-55. Penn State is leading Oklahoma State 64-60. And Fairfield is leading Rutgers 47-36. Big time Monday night football matchup. The reigning champion, Kansas City Chiefs, host the Eagles in a Super Bowl rematch. That game kicks off at 7-15. Our sports sticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now, get ready for hour two of Sports Nightly, right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Chubba gets the shotgun snap, looking to throw. Bean blitz, rolls away from the pressure. Looking upfield, he's going to take off and run. He's got a first down to midfield. 45, Chubba to the 40, 35, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Nebraska. Three, Kendall Murray sends the line drive serve to Harper, her younger sister. Perfect pass. Harper gets it back. A boom. Wow. Gravity is a mere annoyance to Harper Murray. 17-14 Huskers. Takes a handoff. Back to throw. Step throws downfield. Taking a deep shot down the field. And the ball's intercepted. Picked off by Tommy Hill. Has an INT. He's at the 15 to the 20. Breaks a tackle. Skirts to the outside. 25. Makes an inner man miss. Slides his way to the 28-yard line. Served by Laney. Bad pass. And that's a nice. They did it. Conference champions all by themselves and the players dogpile. Oh, look at that emotion released. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Here we are back for hour two sports on a Monday night. Rarity for us. It's been about a month since we've had a full Monday show because of basketball games that have bumped us off. We're not complaining. It's just kind of fun to be with all of you here on a Monday night. Going to talk some hoops. Head coach Fred Hoiberg here in just a little bit. We'll talk about this 5-0 and start and then the route that they had Saturday over Oregon State up in Sioux Falls. Looked like a really good atmosphere and uh, Nebraska playing really well. They'll be back on the court Wednesday night at home against a good Duquesne team. Do not sleep on this game. This is Probably the best team Nebraska's played to this point in time will be Duquesne on Wednesday night. Husker women came up shy yesterday. I thought played pretty well. I know they didn't shoot it well, but I thought Alexis played terrific. Uh, she was a real problem for Creighton, and, and I thought they battled their way into that game, just couldn't get over the hump against the Jays. Yeah, they just you know didn't come out, and I got a chance to chat with um, Amy Williams today, but didn't come out with the kind of defensive intensity that they need. They knew you have to you have to guard on the perimeter against Creighton. They've got shooters all over the floor. And it's a little bit of a tough matchup because of that. You're asking Alexis Markowski to get, guard on the perimeter, which you know she really 
complimented. But then also, you have to be able to make shots because even if you guard Creighton, well, they're still going to make shots. So you have to you have to make shots. And and you know, she had said they didn't didn't make enough either. But you know, th this team has got off to a rough start shooting the basketball. They're going to shoot it better. This is a better shooting team than what their percentages show. And I four percent. Right yeah, now. that's just not typical. I mean, it's not. I mean, Jazz Shelley shoots the ball better than what she shot it. You know, and so. I just I think it's been a little bit weird because of the injuries, because of um, people having to be moved around and be playing different positions. It just maybe not as much in a flow, but they'll they'll get that figured out. I, I'm I'm not worried at all about the three point shooting with this team. They'll get that figured out. We will hear from Amy Williams tomorrow night. They play in a little classic tournament down in in uh, Tampa. Uh, they'll play Thanksgiving Day in the afternoon against Lamar and then TCU on Saturday. So they have a little, they're going to travel and get out of this um, wet weather that we're having here and head south for the Thanksgiving weekend. Good for them to be able to do that. So we'll have that for you. Also, later this hour, they have recorded, have the Cooks, the Kicking Back with the Cooks latest podcast. We'll uh, play you a part of that coming up here in hour number two. 402 413 2400, the number if you want to be a part of the program with. Uh, just a few open segments here this hour with a call or a text. We'd love to t continue talking some Husker football. Coach Rural said today that right now he thinks it's going to be 24 seniors are going to at least be introduced before the game Friday. Now, there are, I, I think the number is 11. might be off one, but I think it's 11 that are absolutely done. This is their sixth year. Their eligibility is exhausted. The other 13, a lot of them are fifth-year seniors, who have to make a decision whether to move on or take advantage of my very favorite thing <laughs> in the world, the COVID year, uh, to come back. Yes, yeah, but it, it's always special. And he talked about this, and, and it does, when you're implementing a new culture like what they've done this year, you have to have the buy-in from the, the senior leaders, the older leaders, whether you are starters and all-the-time contributors or just those guys that show up every single day and do the right things. And so this, this group has been really important to the staff, and, and we've heard him talking about it for a long time, about how important that is. So I think these, these first two classes are going to mean a lot to Coach Rule when he sends them off on senior day. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, we, we taped the television show with Jared a lot, a lot of stations just moments ago, asked him about that class, and he is very appreciative because he knows to set the foundation, you have to get the older guys to buy in. He can't, he couldn't be more effusive in his praise of what that group did and I think it's part of the reason why it's really bothering him that they're not bowl eligible yet he wants that group to experience a bowl game for once in their Husker career yeah because they haven't that's that's haven't. that's really um not ideal not uh when you sign up to come to play that's one of the things that you want to be able to do that's a goal and so you know, for them not to have experienced that. It's a fun, fun chance and, and a really fun thing to get to do as a student athlete. And it's your, your reward is paying off for what you've done through a really long season. And so you really do hope that this, this group gets a chance to do it because it does. It, it, it's crazy to think about that this group hasn't been able to do it, but hope they still got a big, big opportunity. So they, they can do. still get it done for them. Huskers are favored. Yes. Right? I mean, the Vegas guys are picking Nebraska as the favorite in this game. Wasn't it like the lowest over-under or something? In... 29 and a half, I think, or something wow. like that. It's low. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're going to get. It's going to be very cold. I think they've taken the precip out, so no rain or snow in the forecast. It's going to be cold. And two very, very good defenses. Really good. And, they, and the special teams have been great for Iowa, so Nebraska's yeah. going to have to raise their play up a little bit. Yep. Brad and Binkelman says, I want you guys to talk about the, the clock management at the end of the game. Uh, seems to me like we wasted some time on the clock, could have run a couple more plays. The coach got asked about that today, and he, he gave a long answer. I couldn't. It's too long for me to play on Sports Alley, but talked about his reasoning for that. Brad, I would, I would kind of sigh with you. I kind of wish we had saved some seconds. We ended up I think it was like 10 or 12 seconds went off the clock, and then we did call the timeout with 19 seconds left. And, and that, that probably could have been worth at least one more shot to the end zone. So I think that's something that they do have to take a look at. The coach talked about how he didn't want to give Wisconsin much time if we tied it to go down and win it in regulation. He thought his defense was playing really well and could hold up in overtime. Obviously, that wasn't the case, but... I, you know, I think Damon and I shot each other looks while the clock went from about 32 to 20. 
like, man, there's one where I think you need to stop it and give yourself a chance to play a couple of more snaps of the football. Yeah, I mean, it, we were talking about it on the broadcast. You guys were, you said that and on the broadcast. And I just think probably in that situation, you don't know how things are going to unfold. But going back to the decision about fourth down and, and the field goal and all of that, probably thinking, oh, well, we can run out the clock and get the points. And, and so I just think probably, uh, I don't need maybe overthinking a little bit, maybe. But yeah, he, he, he totally explained it. And I, I think we all can agree that, and I think he would agree now that, yeah, I wish maybe would have given the offense a, a little bit more time there. And, and human nature, past experience plays into that. And what happened the week before against Maryland, and I know the circumstances were not identical, but we throw it, the pick, Maryland then goes down and scores. I know not everything is the even there, but I think that probably is in the back of your mind. It just, you're human. You know what just happened recently to your team, and you were trying – to avoid that, you knew you had not the for sure three points, but a great chance he's going to make a fairly short field goal to tie it. And I like the way the Oscars play defense. I thought they would be okay in overtime. It just didn't play out that way. Yeah, absolutely. All right, uh, Huskers, this is what we have for the rest of the week for everybody. Our fo final football show of the year is tomorrow night. We'll have Terrence Knighton. It's going to be fun to talk to Pot Roast. He is a hilarious guy to talk to. And... I think he's done an amazing job of that defensive front. Yeah, I mean, when you heard Coach Roll talking about potential guys that could be coordinators, when he was saying on the talking in his answer about Tony White and saying we got guys on our staff that could be head coaches and coordinators and all that, I think there's no doubt Tony uh, Terrence Knighton could be one of those guys. And boy, those those guys love playing for him. And I mean, I've said it since game one. It's my favorite huddle to listen into. I've learned so much just hearing how he coaches them up. He teaches them. They've bought in. And I mean, you could argue that he's been the MVP this year just because you, when we were talking about this team, what could be the arguably the, maybe the weak link, but not so much the weak link, but just didn't have enough depth or bodies. It was a defensive line. And look how many guys he's been able to bring along. And not so much because of the talent or, or lack of, but just you had a lot of freshmen that you didn't know if they'd be ready to play this year. And, and look at the amount of true freshmen that have been big time contributors and I just the way that he's he's built that depth. I mean, three three guys go down last week, and you wouldn't have even known. Three guys that right. play significant minutes go down or out and are missing time in the game, and you wouldn't have even known because the way that they've been able to rotate and build up that depth. So yeah, I can't wait. He'll be fun to talk to for an hour. Eric and Lincoln on our text line said the INT thrown against Minnesota and then Maryland in the end zone had to play a factor with that clock management. But also, we are one of the worst red zone offenses in the country, and overtime is red zone only. It's a tough call. I, I think you're right, Eric. I think, again, past experience comes into play there. You're going, well, we've been down here before, and we've made a mistake and didn't even give ourselves a chance to go play overtime. So I think the whole season plays into that decision in the back of, of the mind of a coach. How so, can it not? I mean. Right? We were all thinking it. We're all going, man, just don't. Let's at least get this thing tied. Yeah. So. All right, that's what we have for the week. Uh, no show Wednesday because uh, men's basketball will have a partial show for you Thursday. We'll do an hour and then replay the football show for you Thursday night. And then obviously Friday, we're busy. We're going to be busy all day long with the Iowa broadcast. And then in the afternoon on some of these Husker network stations, it'll be the rematch with Nebraska and Wisconsin on the volleyball court. So that'll be fun up in Madison. Yeah, but only one team can go into it. Big Ten champs this that's season. The trophy is already <laughs> It's in, already clinched. Already the Big in. Ten champs versus Wisconsin. Love How about it. that? Woodhouse Auto Family, they are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We're back to talk some hoops with the head coach, Fred Hoiberg. We'll do that next. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. 
For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. In 1923, Bert R. Benjamin had a vision, an all-purpose tractor that could do more. With that, the Farmall was born. This year, Case IH is celebrating 100 years of Farmall, 100 years of milestones, 100 years of innovation, passion, grit. And they're doing it through your stories. Share them at farmall100.com. One lucky storyteller will win their own Farmall, the tractor that is the one for all. Let's face it, nothing makes you look older than you really are than thinning hair. But what if you could not only increase your hair count, but promote new hair growth without surgery, without drugs with potential side effects, and without a prescription from your doctor? Well, now you can, thanks to a breakthrough new supplement called Hair Grow. Provided by New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Europe, Hair Grow is now available in the U.S. Only Hair Grow contains Tokogaya a powerful antioxidant that has received a U.S. patent. Multiple clinical studies show hair grow is safe and effective in promoting new hair growth. In one study, 95% of the patients using hair grow saw increased hair count. Don't lose more time and more hair. Try hair grow today to feel and look your best. Just go to newnordicusa.com or visit Walgreens or Amazon to purchase. Look younger and feel more confident with hair grow by New Nordic at newnordicusa.com. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra. The perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. There's room at the table. Central Valley Ag works with farmers and ranchers to deliver the protein and minerals to ensure their herds are at optimal performance. Winter is coming. CVA's Power Cow Tubs help your herd stay strong and healthy through the toughest season. For a limited time, register to win two 250-pound CVA Power Cow Tubs when you visit cvacoop.com. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. 
Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Tamen 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealers, applying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Let's talk some Husker hoops. Head coach with us here tonight. We're going to start our regular weekly shows in a couple of weeks, but we had to talk a little Husker hoops tonight. You're off to a 5-0 and start. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate Played it. Played well. Yeah, our guys are, I, I thought our most complete game uh, was played up in Sioux Falls a couple of days ago. We got out to a little bit of a slow start. Pope had three really tough mid-range shots, shots you want to give up. And uh, when I put the bench guys in, I thought they really did a good job of getting everything flipped. Uh, Sam did a great job on the ball guarding Pope, uh, made, made it tough on him, and then we turned him over on multiple occasions, and that got us out. The thing I loved about that game was our physicality. We really imposed our will on the offensive glass. We talked about that going in being a huge key. Uh, every game we chart, we have our three, four, five, and those guys went to the offensive glass almost 90% of the time, and it paid off. We got a lot of extra possessions. We scored 22 second-chance points. Uh, we took care of the basketball. That had been a little bit of an issue in the early portion of the season. We only turned it over six times and had 16 assists on the other end, or sorry, 19 assists on the other end. So, you know, just really proud of how our guys, for the most part, kept their foot on the gas. When we got that lead up to 31, I would have liked to see us continue to extend it. Uh, we let them back in uh, by giving them a run to cut it to 20, put the starters back in. The starters were awesome uh, in the second half. And uh, Bryce... Williams continues to get better, continues to get more comfortable. You can see how he's uh, cutting now. He's starting to figure out the nuances of the system. Uh, but it was great to see our guys just from start to finish have a really complete game. Your offense has been hit and miss a little bit in the first five games, but your defense has been really solid. Talk about the, the, the play you've seen on that end of the floor. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing that, as we've talked about with them all year, is that has to be our constant. We have to go out every time we step on the floor and continue to guard. And, you know, a few of the games where the ball didn't go in the hoop, uh, you know, we got some pretty good looks, but we kept guarding, and you know, that's not always easy to do. Human nature is to drop your head a little bit <clears throat> and feel a little sorry for yourself when the ball's not going in the basket, but our guys have continued to fight and continue to claw and scratch and, uh, and defend. And the thing I've been really pleased with, uh, Greg, is the last four opponents, we've got rebounded all four of them by double digits uh, by at least 13. And, you know, if we continue on with that, if we continue to win the battle of the boards, we're going to have a chance to have a really good year. Last year, we all knew Emmanuel was such an elite defender. How about the new players that you brought into the system? How have they done on that defensive end? Yeah, they, they've, been, they've been really solid. And Jamarcus, it starts with him. He's yeah. done a great job guarding the ball. And, uh, you know, Sam does a good job as the backup. Those guys know exactly what we want on that end of the floor. Uh, Rink and Josiah, you know what you're going to get. Rink's one of the better pick-and-roll defenders that I've coached. Josiah is just all over the place, getting his hands on balls. And then Jawan, you know, Jawan was a big part of that early season success last year in the defensive end when we were one of the top defensive teams in the country before he and Emmanuel went down. Uh, so we know what we're getting out of him as well. And then Bryce, you look at his length uh, at 6'8". He, uh, he had a stretch on Pope, who's a very good scorer for uh, Oregon State, uh, where he did a really nice job as well. So I've been really pleased. You know, the other thing that we did in the second half the other night is fouled too much. Uh, we've been a really good team the last few years of defending without fouling. Uh, we got them into the bonus, and they took advantage of that by getting to the free throw line. Uh, but overall, yeah, the defensive end has, has been a, a huge positive uh, in the early stages. We're talking hoops with Husker head coach Fred Hoiberg. Husker's off to a 5-0 and start. They'll play Duquesne on Wednesday night. I'm going to ask you about them here in a minute. Rank Mass has just been so impressive. Several double-doubles early in the season. He's getting some national attention. People going, wow, this guy can really play. Your thoughts about what you've gotten out of him so far this year? Well, Rink, is, he's perfect for our system with, with the spread offense, with being able to knock down shots, uh, scoring it inside and out. 
you know, just tenacious on the glass on both ends. He was the second leading rebounder in his league a year ago, and he just brings great versatility for us. He can pass. Uh, you know, maybe doesn't handle it quite like Derek did, but he can really handle it, and he's uh, certainly capable of going off and making shots uh, from outside the arc. And, you know, again, defensively, as I said earlier, he's a terrific uh, pick-and-roll defender. Uh, you know what you're going to get every day. You're, you're never going to wonder, are we going to get it out of rink tonight? He brings it every time he steps on the court. Yeah, that's nice, right? For coach well, you know and it's not just him. I mean, he, he and Josiah, every day, they step on the floor. Uh, you know, Josiah, I was really disappointed in the first game. I didn't l love uh, how we were going after loose balls. I thought we got beat to a few of them. They were first to the floor. And the very first play in practice that next morning, after watching those clips on film, Josiah laid out. It almost looked like, you remember the old Dennis Rodman poster oh, yeah. when he's laid yeah. out, jumping out of that? Josiah made one of those plays, and that almost flipped it. From that point on, we've gotten pretty much every loose ball that's, uh, that's been on the floor. We've not had you in since signing day, so I want to get your thoughts about the two young men that signed the dotted line and become future Cornhuskers. Yeah, really excited about the two guys that we got in the early signing period. And Nick Janowski is a, a kid that committed to us a while ago. He's won three straight state championships up in Wisconsin. Uh, you know, obviously going for number four this year. He's one of the elite shooters in his class. Uh, lefty, he can flat out fill it up. He'll be he'll be huge to uh, you know to, to fill in for what Kase uh, gives us as far as a shooter. He's an absolute knockdown uh, shooter. I think he had 53 in a summer league game uh, earlier and followed that up with a 51 point game. So he's a kid that can really put the ball in the basket. Combo guard can play with it in his hands uh, and also play off the ball. Um, and then. Uh, you know, looking at uh, at Braden Frager, uh, other guy that we got is a local kid, Lincoln Southwest, uh, high flying athlete. You just go, you'll go in and dunk on a whole team. He had a great summer uh, with the Lincoln Supreme team, and uh, he's in a very well coached system. Um, you know, with uh, uh, with Alex Baugh. So you know, I just I, I love both those kids. They fit what we want from a culture standpoint. Uh, two hard playing guys. They can both make shots. Uh, and I think they'll really compete on the other end as well. All right, good. First, Braden's the first Lincoln kid to Simon, Nebraska since Jake Muehlheisen. Yeah, it's been about, a while. Too about, long. How about that? <laughs> too long ago. Um, all right, Duquesne's coming here Wednesday night. Is it a stretch to say this might be the best team you've played so far? No, this, this, this team, you'll see it in their guards. They're, they're two of the best uh, scorers that will play and the freedom that they play with. They, they'll shoot from 27, 28 feet. And, uh, you know, both elite, elite level scorers, but, you know, both right around 20 points. And, uh, you know, good drivers, good finishers. And, you know, we're going to have our hands full with this one. So we, it's one of those games you have to get off to a good start. They'll really pressure. They'll get up full court, pick up 94 feet, uh, get out and deny, get into passing lanes, and really try to make it a hectic uh, uh, scramble type game. Uh, we have to be on point. We have to know where those guys are. We can't give them anything easy in transition and we have to take care of the basketball. They're really good at getting steals and uh, turning those into points. You have played almost an NBA-type schedule the first couple weeks. Give me the advantages and maybe some disadvantages of playing that many games in about a two-week period. Yeah, I, I like it. I like the schedule, how it's been so far. Uh, we've got two more in this crazy stretch with, uh, with Duquesne Wednesday and then Fullerton on Sunday, and then, we'll get a week, and then we'll get a week after, uh, after that to prepare uh, for the Creighton game. But, you know, this, uh, this game against Duquesne, you, you, you'll see pretty quickly. It's, they're fast. Um, you know, it's an exciting team. I think they've got a great chance to win their league. Uh, this year and be in the tournament, and you know it's a good opportunity. That, you know, give you a, a little bit of a uh, context on them. You know, the Ryder team that we had some struggles with, they had them down 32 at one point in that game. So you know, it's a team that's going to uh, be a big challenge. You know, as far as the benefits of playing a lot of games in a short amount of time, uh, you know, I like it. Our guys like it. Uh, they've been really locked in. You know, especially the day we had the one-day prep. And I've told them, guys, you, you all want to play at the next level. We've got NBA-type preparation going on. So these mental days, how are we going to process it? How will that help us carry over and understand the game plan and then execute it on game day? And I'm, and I'm proud of our guys for doing it so far. You said in the press conference earlier today, one of your toughest jobs right now is working on rotation and who to play when and how much to play certain lineups together. How much does your staff help you with that as the game is progressing? Yeah, the, I've got a great staff. I, I, I you know, love those guys, what they're bringing uh, every day to the table. Uh, you know, I'll get suggestions throughout the game, uh, and sometimes I take them, sometimes I don't, just based on the feel and how the flow of the game is going. Uh, but, you know, more often than not, when they give me a suggestion, they see something out on the floor that we may need to change. 
And, uh, you know, I, I, again, the trust factor that we have with our staff and the chemistry is, is phenomenal. And you have to have that, uh, you know, if you're going to have a successful program. So, you know, it, it's something where it, it is a challenge as far as who are the guys are going to be. Because we've had, I think, in the five games, five different leading scorers, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, it's, that's the type of team that we have this year. It's not going to be your night every night. And how are you going to accept it when you come out of a game after maybe playing 25 minutes the game before and only playing 12 the next night? We've got eight guys that have played 18 minutes or more, and nobody's played more than 27. So, you know, I like the way it's working right now. Uh, you know, hopefully that'll keep us fresh as the, as the year goes on. Without giving away secrets, have you kind of identified maybe a group that's better on the defensive end if you need some stops? And maybe guys that are better when you want to really get it going offensively. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You, you have those types of lineups, you know, who you want to finish with that give you the best chance on the defensive end. Or if you need to score, you know, who are the lineups that give you the best opportunity to put the ball in the basket. So, you know, you haven't obviously had that in a game. We haven't had a close game down the stretch yet. Uh, you know, certainly we'll figure that out when the time comes. I'm okay with that. Keep blowing these teams out, would you? That would be nice. Very nice. Good to see you. Keep it rolling. We'll look forward to this game on Wednesday. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Great to see you. Fred Hoiberg with us here on Sports Nightly. Folks, buckle up. Put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. We've got more Sports Nightly coming up. It's time to light up the season during the Make the Holidays Bright sales event. Get our best offers and choose from a huge selection of Ford F-150 trucks with the capability, convenience, and technology to help bring us together. Discover how Ford F-150 can make the holidays bright. Now, get a new 2023 Ford F-150 with 2.9% financing for 72 months. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. When you're clocking out and happy hour's already started. But... You're clocking out and happy hour's already started. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Pick up Bud Light at your local convenience store today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks. Foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. There's room at the table. Central Valley Ag works with farmers and ranchers to deliver the protein and minerals to ensure their herds are at optimal performance. Winter is coming. CVA's Power Cow Tubs help your herd stay strong and healthy through the toughest season. For a limited time, register to win two 250-pound CVA Power Cow Tubs when you visit cvacoop.com. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. What's colder than the coldest? A polar bear. I have reports of polar bear on the loops. Man, is it cold enough for a polar bear in here? Yes, we use SOS. Come on in. SOS to the rescue! Nebraska defense lineman Nash Hubbard here. People know me as the polar bear, and when I want to stay cool, I call SOS. Their texts don't make commissions, so they give you an honest opinion, fair pricing, and longer warranties than the competition. Guaranteed. 
Mention the polar bear and get a free 10 year labor warranty on New York equipment. The best warranty you have. At Citadel and Chevrolet, we prioritize our customers and promise an honest experience from start to finish. Visit us in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo and experience for yourself why we are Nebraska's number one volume Chevy dealer. And as your Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cab forwards. Visit SidDillonChevy.com. Chevy, find new roads. You are what drives us. Dylan. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. And to all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Taman 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. Hi, I'm a volleyball. It's an okay life. I go back and forth about it. But I really wish I was a Nebraska Lottery Powerball or Mega Millions Mega Ball. See, all they have to do is mix around in a big plastic bubble and roll down a ramp and then people win millions. What a great life. As for me, I get thrown around all day and have to worry about getting spiked, which is about to happen right now. Oh, ow! Ooh, couldn't you just do a nice, gentle tip? The Nebraska Lottery. Top prize odds vary by game. Pioneer's proud to partner with Iowa and Nebraska in the Pioneer Heroes game. But a Friday, honoring local heroes who positively impact the community and stand as an inspiration to others. Pioneer proudly celebrating our local communities. Congratulations to Nebraska's hero, Josh Hicks. And boy, does he have an amazing story. We'll talk more, more about that as we move on in the week. We welcome you back, Sports Nightly, here on a Monday night. Well, in the last couple of days, another edition of the Kicking Back with the Cooks podcast has been recorded. This is where Lauren Cook-West sits down with her dad, Oscar Head Volleyball Coach John Cook. Here's a part of this month's podcast. Uh, you're going to hate this question, but I, I have to ask it. <laughs> Does Wisconsin's loss to Penn State put more pressure on you or less pressure? We, we don't even pay attention to that stuff. I know. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. You're secretly, though, paying attention yeah. in the back of your mind. Nope. And I, all I remember is Wisconsin celebrating in our court last year, winning the Big Ten. So there's my motivation. Well, yeah, hopefully you're celebrating on their court this year. <laughs> Uh, how has or what has Jordan Larson's role turned into, and how has she developed as a coach? Sure, her role's evolving. She's trying to get her feel for how uh, uh, to connect with our players. She's working really hard at building relationships. She pretty much has coffee every day with somebody, and uh, doing a great job with that. She's watching video and sends out video clips to them. So. Uh, her role is evolving, and I'm turning more and more to her. Like, hey, take this player today, and you know, work on this. And um, so, I think she's getting pretty comfortable and um, is figuring things out. And it's really, really nice to have her in the gym. I'll tell you what. I heard she was working with Allie Batenhorst, and Allie looks like she's improving or becoming more comfortable, more confident. I don't know what it is, but she she's looks like she's starting to finally figure things out. Yeah, well, Allie, Allie's figured things out in the past. It's just been how consistent can she be. And, uh, but 
you know, like we played last night, and I told Ali game game uh, four, I said, you're, you're going to be in there, and you have to block and make a block and get a kill for us to win this. And she went out and did it. And uh, so uh, the position she plays ends up in a lot of those moments, uh, you know, a long rally, and she's going to get the set. But she had a great kill in game four. Um, but uh, so... She's, she's proven she can do that. What I'd like to see her do is play at a high level more consistently, like a lot of our players. But that, that's just you know, me as a coach trying to push them to, to where we want them to be. Uh, I want to ask you, best rotation, worst rotation? Oh, it all depends on the night. So it makes no <laughs> sense. Okay. If, if, our, our worst, if, for example, our worst rotation was rotation two, and then the last month it's been our best. So I, I don't know. It's... It's a, it's a funny game. Never what about the month, month before that? Most consistently, what's been your worst rotation and your best rotation? Our two worst rotations early on, early in the Big Ten was rotation two and five, and now those last month those have been our two best. Uh, and you, you know, and you our, don't know why that is. We weren't scoring very well in rotation six, and now it's one of our strongest. We've been scoring a ton of points in rotation six, and um, so. Yeah, it just it varies match to week to week, month to month. I don't know. It makes no sense to me, so I don't, I don't, I'm not going to drive myself crazy. Who's, who's your best server and your worst server? Uh, our, well, are you talking about point scoring, aces, just or just what we call however knockout? you want it? Knockout. However you, yeah, however you want to interpret that question. Yeah, Merit's our best knockout server, and has been all year, uh, and uh, and. Behind her uh, is uh, probably Bergen, and and then uh, from there, there's everybody's pretty consistent. Actually, you know, Harper's been a great knockout server. She just you know misses more, and um, we probably have run the most points with Lexi serving though. Lexi's we make a lot of runs in our rotation three, and that's Ali, Andy, and Merritt up there. And uh, Harper back row with Lexi, and you know the great thing about Lexi, she can serve anywhere on the court. So we can really stress teams by location serving, not so much power serving. Why don't you start in rotation four if Merritt's one of your strongest servers? Uh, because we're trying to uh, in the we're tr we're trying to have Merritt in the start in the front row as much as we can. So we can get her as many sets as we can. So that's, we're looking at side and out too, not just point scoring. So you want uneven distribution? You want Merit right. to get every ball? But, but if you look at our serving, you know, we start in rotation one. You got Bergen serving first, then Harper, then Lexi, then Merritt. And those are four really good servers coming at you. And then Laney okay. has really evolved lately. Uh, and she's, her, she's been doing a really nice job serving. And then Kennedy has been really good some nights. And then we brought in Maisie, who's, who's done a great job. She's won a couple big points for us and created, got a big ace a couple nights ago. And uh, so, the, you know, we feel like that's being pretty solid right now. Best attacker and worst attacker? Again, that depends on the night. It, how, how, however you interpret that question. If, it, if the set's who, really good and there's one blocker, Andy Jackson's the best attacker. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? But as soon as she gets two blockers yeah. in front of her, if it's Bergen a jumps on the net with no block, she's our best attacker. Can we work on Bergen's attacking? I need. There's so she has so many opportunities to go up. No one respects her. I know. And I, she I tell can her just throw day. that ball down. I tell her that every day. Drives hey, me crazy. Nobody on you. No respect. Best blocker or worst blocker? Uh, you know, to begin, it depends on the day. Blocking is a team thing, as you know. I know, but if. I mean, who's consistently shown up? Is it probably Becca? Becca is an elite blocker. Ali is an elite blocker. Uh, so those two are both very high level. I mean, if you want to watch blocking, get on video and watch those guys. Okay, best. I love how you're not answering who the worst yeah, is. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> uh, best passer, worst passer. I'm not going there. It depends on the night. Lexi? Yeah, Lexi's, Lexi's the, the best be I mean, passer. Okay, just in the this, nation. We're the best passing team in the country, and Lexi's the best passer. So there you go. According to the stats on who, with these guys that throw up stats on all this stuff out of off volumetrics. 
You're the best passing team in the country. We were uh, up till uh, last week, I, I, or two weeks ago. Wow. And I knew Lexi was one of the best passers in the nation. But yeah. Lexi is the number one in the rankings on that thing. Before we get to your favorite confessions and lessons, Thanksgiving, what is your favorite Thanksgiving dish? Uh, I, I love Thanksgiving. It's my favorite holiday. This year we'll be doing it with the team because we leave Thursday Thanksgiving to go to Wisconsin. But, uh, yeah, I love everything about Thanksgiving. What, so what's your favorite side dish or main dish or thing I, to eat on I, Thanksgiving? I like everything. So There's not one thing that stands out. Pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie. Yeah. Whipped cream or ice cream? Yeah, whipped cream. <laughs> what, so what is the plan? Are you, are you guys doing something when you get to Wisconsin or are you doing something in Lincoln no, before no, you leave? There's nothing open on, on Thanksgiving in Link and, and anywhere in, in Madison. So we're, we're going to do a thing with the team here before we leave on, on uh, our Wednesday night after practice. And then Thursday we fly up to Wisconsin. And so we'll just, whatever we can get at the hotel. I mean, it's, uh, we're not doing a Thanksgiving dinner that day. How good is that? Always entertaining to hear kicking back with the cooks. You can go hear the entire podcast on our platform, podcast plat platform page, or wherever you find your podcast. It's brought to you by our good friends at Woodhouse. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at Woodhouse. Dot com. All right. It's been a fun day around the stadium today. We've had the uh, Class D, D1, and D2 state championship football games. Class B is going on right now. Bennington leads Scott 7 0. They just went early second quarter. There'll be three more games tomorrow C1, C2, and Class A will wrap it up tomorrow night. Been a soggy day around the stadium. We've had kind of a light mist, light rain throughout most of the day. So a lot of rain soaked fans at Memorial Stadium. Uh, today and tomorrow. Temperature's not bad, though. I mean, we're kind of in the mid to upper 40s, so it's not awful temperature-wise for these state championship games. Need to step aside, get a break. We'll come back and get everybody's weekend winners as we get ready to wrap up our Monday Sports Alley. That's next. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Shop Woodhouse Hyundai during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event happening now. Lease the 2023 Hyundai Ionic 6 for $399 per month for 24 months and 10,000 miles per year. You can rest easy with Hyundai Shopper Assurance, America's best 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty at woodhousehyundai.com today. With a approved credit, tax title, and license extra, $3,999 down plus first payment and $299 off fee due at signing. Offer expires November 30th, 2023. See dealer for details. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, Husker fans, it's Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. As we get ready to celebrate 1890's one-year anniversary, I'm proud to say the 1890 Initiative now represents 150 Husker student-athletes in nine sports. And with your help, we can keep 1890 going strong. 
helping student athletes get the most from their name, image, and likeness, and preparing them for life after college. Visit 1890Nebraska.com to learn more about NIL and 1890 and contribute today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp back with you. Final few minutes of our Monday show again tomorrow night. It's our football show for the week. Defensive line coach Terrence Knighton will be here for the hour number one of the program. We'll also hear from both coordinators tomorrow night in a practice report and Amy Williams. We'll stop by Husker women's basketball coach. They're getting ready to head down to the Tampa area for a couple of games over the Thanksgiving holiday. They'll play Lamar on Thursday and then TCU on Saturday. They came up just short against Creighton yesterday, 79-74. Uh, Pretty entertaining game at PBA yesterday. All right, time to uh, name our weekend winners. Henry is manning the board tonight. Henry, what's, uh, what's on your list? Um, I'll go with... Husker soccer. Terrific choice. Nebraska beat Tennessee Friday night and then moved their way into the fourth round, which there's only eight teams left. They beat UC Irvine, really beat them up. It was a 4 nothing final. Uh, so they move on. They'll play Stanford on Friday out in Palo Alto. Did, did young Cole send you one or not? Cole did. He just sent it to me. Uh, okay. His is the volleyball team. In their run of being undefeated, Big Ten title, um, yeah, and they're just having a great year. Well, worth it. I mean, they, they got the, the, the co-championship Friday night because Wisconsin got beat by Purdue in a five-set thriller. The Huskers then beat Michigan and then wrapped it up with the victory over Iowa yesterday in Iowa City. Still two regular season matches left for the Big Red as – they will travel to Madison to have that rematch with the Badgers Friday at 3 o'clock, and then they'll finish off the regular season Saturday in Minneapolis against the Gophers. Selection Sunday is this coming Sunday, 5 o'clock on ESPN, as we will have the broadcast of the selection show. Nebraska will be home next week for the first two rounds. All right, you guys stole a couple of Jessica's uh, winners. She had a, gave me a list of four. Glad she did because you guys have picked off a couple of them. But she's going to go with Eleanor Dale, who set the school record for scoring. She scored two goals in the victory yesterday over UC Irvine. What a year for Eleanor Dale. She is no doubt a first-team All-American and has a shot, folks, at being the National Player of the Year. I mean, just remarkable season that Eleanor has had for the Cornhuskers. Again, there's only eight teams left. In college soccer, Huskers are one of them. Penn State also still alive, so the Big Ten has two of those teams left out of the eight. That's pretty impressive for the Big Ten Conference. My winner for the weekend is Husker Wrestling. They won the Navy Classic for the second straight year. Four Huskers won their weight titles in this tournament. There were 14 teams there. Caleb Smith won at 125. Brock Hardy 144. One Ridge Lovett, 149. Peyton Robert, 157. Antrell Tater, 165. And Lenny Pento, one at 184. Huskers rolled to the team title. Mark Manning's team is off to a great start. What a batch of winners, right, for the weekend. Thanks to uh, Henry for steering the ship tonight. We're back with you for a full two hours tomorrow night. Enjoy your rest of your evening. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts.
Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Everybody wants a classic Christmas. Well, there's nothing more classic than cash. So until January 3rd, 2024, enter non-winning Nebraska Lottery Holiday Classic Scratch Tickets online, and you could win $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, or $20,000. Hurry and jingle all the way to your nearest Nebraska Lottery retailer and have yourself a classic little Christmas with the whole family of Holiday Classic Scratch Tickets. Top prize odds vary by game. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't